All right, let's start actually converting some points over, huh? We're gonna go from, uh, what are we gonna do first? I think possibly, let's go from polar to some rectangular points, all right? Now, the only thing we really gotta have on lock here is that x is equal to r cosine of theta and that y is equal to r sine of theta, and I think we can knock this shit out pretty darn quick. So let's look at our first one. Let's say it's three comma pi over three. All right, that's our r and our theta. And what we're trying to do here is we wanna convert into x's and y's, huh? I wanna just convert on into those x's and y's. So we're saying that this is, well, let's go find x. X is gonna be r times cosine of theta. There's r and there's your theta. So it's three times cosine of pi over three. And then our y value, since y goes with sine, we'll say it's 3 times sine of pi over 3. So we get 3 times a half and 3 times root 3 over 2. For, well, it looks like our xy is going to be 3 halves, comma, 3 root 3 over 2. Come on, dude. Come on. All you got to know, x is equal to r cosine of theta, y is equal to r sine of theta. Let's do another. Let's say we have, um, let's go 2 comma negative 5 pi over 6. And we want to convert that thing. Well, let's think. Where would that be? That would be, uh, so negative 5 pi over 6 would be going on. We'd be down to the third quadrant. We'd be in the, is that where it would be? No, I think I have that wrong. I think I have that. No, that's where it would be. Yeah, we'd be right there in the third quadrant. So both our x's and our y's should be negative. All right, let's find out. So our x is going to be equal to r times cosine of theta. And our y value is going to be equal to 2 times sine, or r times sine of theta. Just putting them in. Well, cosine is an even function, so cosine of negative 5 pi over 6 is exactly the same thing as cosine of positive 5 pi over 6, which is going to be <gasps> negative root 3 over 2. Um, continuing to use a calculator to not know how to do this is going to come back and bite you in the ass. Come hang out with me in, in calculus. Um, I will show you that that will be a horrible thing. So if you still don't know these numbers, go ahead and just cheat your way on through the rest of the class. It will become, it will come back to haunt you, I promise. So, little ease now. Make life suck later. So, all right, we clean it up, clean it up. We get negative root 3 and we get our y value is equal to 1. So that converted over to negative root 3. Oops. Oops. That's negative 1 half. That's negative 1. Look at me talking shit about your lack of knowledge on here. Uh, I'm plugging these things in and knowing your values, and I screwed up my sign. Because sign sign's an odd function. That negative could actually just travel to the outside. Sign 5, 5, 6 is positive. All right, let's do, let's do another. Uh, and when we try this one, let's give it a negative radius. Let's call it negative 3 times, uh, let's keep it mellow. Let's go with pi over 4. And pi over 4, we know that's in the first quadrant, right? But with that negative radius, we'd be like, we go this way, then, oh, shit, we go back that direction. Oh, we'd be back in the third quadrant, which would mean both our x's and our y's would be negative. So our x is equal to r times cosine of theta, and y is equal to r times sine of theta. So there's our x is equal to negative 3 times root 2 over 2, and y is equal to negative 3 times root 2 over 2. But that, that should make sense. We're at a pi over 4. You should get the same x and y value without the different positives and negatives. So we can say our answer is 3 root 2 over 2, comma, negative 3 root 2 over 2. Just a little piece going the other direction. You ever see that your x and your y values are the same exact thing? You're at pi over 4. And if they're off by just a sign, but they're the same numbers, you're at either pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, or 7 pi over 4. You're splitting the difference in one of those quadrants. Okay. So there's one direction. That's the simple way. But what about rectangular to polar? All right. Let's get it. So let's say we're at a point. This is our x's and y's, and we're going to want to go into our r comma theta. We want to go the other direction. So, 
what do we got? Let's start off with, um, let's go two comma two. Maybe you paid attention to that last thing I was saying. Maybe you paid attention, maybe not. I don't know what you're doing. So we need to find the radius of the sucker. Let's write up our formulas for the radius. So our, our radius is equal to the square root of our x squared plus our y squared. And our theta is equal to inverse tangent of y over x for in quad one and four. So quad one, quad four. And it's equal to inverse tangent of y over x plus pi quad two and quad three. Okay. So let's go get our radius. Our radius is equal to the square root of two squared plus two squared, because there's our x and our y. So we get that, oh, it's two root two. Huh? It's two root two. And then we have to get that angle. I wonder what freaking angle it could possibly be. Oh, I guess we got to plug it into inverse tangent to go find out the inverse tangent of one is equal to pi over four. So we're like, okay, well, theta is equal to inverse tangent. And if you take a second and just look where your x's and y's are in your like first quadrant, you're like, shit, I don't need to use this one down here. If you just make this one little teeny tiny step, you see that shit where I just drew a dot where the freaking positive x and the positive y was just to let me know so I don't make a sign there because that's where you're going to screw up. I'll tell you, that, that's where you're going to make your mistake. You're going to put it in the wrong freaking, the wrong quadrant or you're going to be paying attention to it, or you're going to be mindful of it, and you'll actually make the, you'll get the right thing. But I know just giving tests, I'd say that is the number one thing that is missed. You all don't like looking or actually checking to see what's going on. You like to just follow a freaking process. This is not a huge thing to understand. If you understand it, then the process becomes so freaking obvious. But if you want to just keep memorizing processes in zero knowledge, you'll, you'll make mistakes through this. And this is not a tough effing concept. You've been messing around with where X's and Y's are? Shit, my arithmetic classes back in the day knew where a positive X and a positive Y. You know where that shit is too. So, okay, I shut up now. So now we put it in. We're like, all right, you got your two over two. That's one and inverse tangent of one is equal to 45 degrees or pi over four. So there's our solution. Let's do another. Let's say we want to take, uh, let's make this one 2 root 3. Let's make that negative, and we're going to call this one 2. All right, cool. We want to go put this into x's and y's. We want x's and y's. No, 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 no. Those are x's and y's. What am I doing? What am I doing? We want polar. We want r's and thetas. I'm getting all confused here. This is an X's and Y's. Notice how you can get confused. Your X's and Y's, we're trying to put that into R comma theta. Okay. So to get our radius, let's set it up. Our radius is equal to the square root of whatever our X value is squared plus the Y value squared. So that becomes 2, yeah, not 2. 2 squared is 4. Root 3 squared is 3. 4, so that's 4 fours, that's equal to 4. Square root of 16 is equal to 4. So we got the radius. Okay, 4 comma. Now we just got to go find that angle. And if we just do something like this real quick and go negative x, positive y, negative x, positive y, that's the second quadrant. Oh my gosh, that was so tough. Oh, dang, do you know which formula to use? Wow. I must be a genius or something. You know how to find where positive x is and negative x is, are. I'm just continuing talking shit because I want you to actually follow this rule. So this is saying that our angle is going to be inverse tangent of y over x, but since we're in the second quadrant, we have to add pi to our answer because it's only going to tell us answers in the first and the fourth quadrant. We have to manipulate it. So our answer is going to pop something out that tells us we're down here, but that's not where it is. When you just take inverse tangent of y over x, you're going to find out the answer will pop out of your calculator telling you you're in the fourth quadrant. You're not. So we say inverse tangent of 2 over negative 2 root 3 plus pi. This is equal to inverse tangent. Don't be afraid of crossing shit out. Negative 1 over root 3 plus pi. And oh, shit, we learned all about this. Remember, you took a test on this. So this is going to be equal to negative pi over 6. 
inverse tangent of negative 1 over root 3 is equal to negative pi over 6. And that's on the fourth quadrant in the wrong spot, so we must add pi to it. So we find out that it is 5 pi over 6. Because 6 pi over 6 plus negative pi over 6 is equal to 5 pi over 6. And there is our solution. This is the game we play. Now, I'm going to do one more to kind of trip you out just a little bit. But you should know it from the last time. This one I'll go real quickly with. And let's say this is uh, 10 comma pi over 2. Oh, no. Shit. I lied. I lied. Never mind. I think I just ruined my trick. Uh, I was going to call it something different. Let's call this a 0 comma 10. I was trying to get it to point in that direction. Shit. I think I gave you the answer. Damn it. Those are x's and y's. And uh, we want to convert this into r's and thetas here, right? Well, cool. Let's go find the radius of this thing. I wonder how far it is from the origin up to 10. Oh, I wonder how far. The radius is 10. I'm just writing it in. You don't need help with that. You don't need help with that. 0 squared plus 10 squared is equal to 100. The square root of 100 is 10. I'm not even writing that shit down. But now we go get the angle. Is Now, is this, is this point right here, is that in the second or is that the first quarter? It's in neither. So we don't really even have a formula for it. So if you were to try and say, well, the angle is equal to the inverse tangent of, uh, I'm going to take my freaking y value of 10, and I'll take my x value of 0, and you're like, but that's freaking nonsense. It's undefined. Well, that's not a good way of solving it. When you have a 0 as one of them, use your effing head. When one of these is 0, do you think you might be able to figure out what the fuck? It's in pi over 2. I love setting that shit up because if you just get formulaic and try and punch it in, you'll be like, well, it's undefined. And you'll write stupid shit down like no solution. Of course there's a freaking solution. If you just look at the X and the Y, I cannot stress this enough. Just drawing something so you can see it will tell you if you're doing something horribly wrong or not. Wow, I'm getting fired up. Just an angry man in a room just ranting all by myself. Damn, my dogs aren't even listening anymore. All right, I'll see y'all later.